What's up, Jen? Thanks for joining us. Of course. Uh, it's a lot of fun to have you here. It's been a lot of fun to have you in the facility, I guess. Been here for like three months now, about 12 weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, let's let's get right into it. Let's talk about kind of your baseball journey to start off with. Obviously, very different being a female in baseball. It's not exactly the typical track. But uh, let's talk about how you were growing up, kind of how'd you get into baseball? Um, so pretty much it all started with um, me watching my brother. So every week, every Sunday, I'd go to his games and eventually I just got sick of watching and I, <laughs> I was like, mom, please let me play t-ball. So I started with t-ball. I started playing with a really great group of like friends that we like continued to play together through like under 12s and under 14s and pretty much just like t-ball that those couple of years, like I loved it so much and I was like, I'm, I'm okay at this. Yeah. So I just kept going and I loved it ever since. So typically, like I know people start in Australia at least, we start with t-ball and then like girls tend to branch off into softball, guys tend to branch off into baseball. What made you take that branch to baseball rather than softball? Um, honestly, I think that I, I was really lucky because the only time I really got pushed into softball was by people that didn't really know me or didn't really know my playing abilities. But the people who actually coached me wanted me to continue with baseball. So I never really had that like pulling force away from baseball. So I think I was really lucky with that. No, that's sweet. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's changing a lot in Australia. There's a lot more women's baseball. But I imagine yeah. as you were growing up, it would have been like, oh, like, why aren't you playing softball? But yeah. it's awesome that you stuck with baseball, obviously having a lot of success there. Yeah. Um, so let's, sorry. So like obviously you've been pretty successful in your baseball career so far, um, playing junior Australian teams with the guys, you know, under 12s, under 15s, and recently under 18s in September in the World Cup. Talk to me a little bit like what that was like being on those representative teams and how like, I guess the excitement around that. Yeah, for sure. It definitely started with my under 12 Karupkin team. Um, that was a blur. Like I remember I was on a um, state team going to Tokyo, a like girls state team. Yep. And then I got a call probably like the second last day I was there and they were like, you're going to play in the Corrigan <laughs> World Series. And I was like, I remember just shaking as this little 12 year old, like being so excited. I got to go to America and I think that was so surreal. That was like my first taste of like world baseball. Yeah. And ever since then, it's like, there's nothing like that feeling like starting for Australia, like your heart's racing. Yeah, you just like have so much pride and then all the other ones have been great. I mean, the training camp in Florida, that was really exciting. I love that. That was a really good experience. Not only like just playing, but getting to meet people just around Florida and like huge baseball names. Um, we got to go to the PG under 14 select yeah. fest. Crazy kids. Yeah. It was amazing. It was yep. really sick. Yeah, I'm fortunate about that tournament with the with the blister on your finger keeping you out of the team. Yep. When able to play, but would have been on that team provided you were healthy. Um, and then I guess as well as that, I mean, jumping on the rest of the success, playing in the ABL in 2021 with the Aces, how was that being on, I guess, like the big stage in Australia? Yeah, that was sick. Um, I remember that night so vividly, like, um, Moilo told me, like, be ready, like, you might play in this game. So I like, headed down to the bullpen and I, I was like, oh, like, I'm just, I'm a development player. Like, I'm not going to pitch this game. And then I remember, um, like, the walkie-talkie going, get Jen hot and I was like oh my god this is happening and I guess in the moment I was just thinking about like we're losing to the Giants like I gotta stop the yeah. run scoring <laughs> like I just I just need to pitch well and like I wasn't thinking about damn if I give up a bomb this is gonna go on sports yeah. illustrate I'm, I'm gonna get ripped but I was just trying to think about like stopping the momentum and then that game coming off the mound everyone was so excited I was like guys I can get out it's like it's it's, it's okay. amazing yeah. But then um, I remember checking my phone like afterwards and it was just like blowing up. Yeah. Like it was crazy. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't realize that this would get the kind of reaction that it did. So Yeah, it went it went viral, right? I mean, yeah. you had appearances on MLB Network, obviously. You know, Peter Moylan being with the Braves, you did a lot through there. Yeah. Um, it was awesome kind of seeing that blow up because it is recognition that you deserve being as good as you are. It was a clean inning as well. Yeah. Uh, got a few of my friends out with the Adelaide Giants, <laughs> unfortunately. But I mean, a really good job from you there. And I mean, it's awesome. It's kind of like, somewhat skyrocketed you and continued you moving forward, which is, which is sweet. Definitely. Um, I guess I want to talk a little bit about women's baseball. I know that like, it's not very well known. There's obviously like small pockets here and there that people talk about, especially with the, uh, the girl at Brown right now playing. That's yeah. awesome too. Um, talk to me a little bit about women's baseball in Australia right now. Cause I know that at least in Adelaide, we've got three women's divisions in the SABL. 
Yeah. So what's it like in Melbourne? It's really cool. Personally, I don't play women's baseball just because I don't have the time with like all the other leagues. But um, yeah. it's really cool. I know they've got a bunch of divisions where like we've got some of the best players in the country. Like we've got the Shea Lily Whites, Morgan Doties, yeah. all those kind of players. Like it's it's really great. Um, it's definitely grown a lot. I know in the past couple of years they've raised a bunch of money to fund women's baseball. So we're getting to the point where we can even have like a women's ABL, which is yeah. sick. And we've had a couple of showcases now. So hopefully that can turn into a real season because it'll be so awesome. I, I know we've got the talent, like we're getting the depth, like started with two teams then it went to like four or five. So maybe this year will be bigger, but it's really good. It's growing heaps. Yeah, I think that's definitely in the works with the ABL of getting a women's ABL started up. I know the showcases, uh, the one in 2021 where we were both on the Adelaide Giants um, was a lot of fun. It was like four days, super fun, really competitive. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. Um, so like that was that was sweet having obviously everybody there and having like a full on like it being the legitimate professional experience yeah. like it would be in the ABL. Yeah. And yeah, I think that'll definitely come soon of like whether it's a whether it's a full season, shortened season, there's definitely something in the works of it being like a full season. So it'll be sweet. I think it's like almost even more fun the fact that like I got to play with a lot of people from like SA and yeah. you know Brisbane those kind of girls like I never get to play with people from other states and it meant like I got to meet a bunch of really cool great baseball players out of it that I didn't even know beforehand Just yeah in those four days I came so close to so many people was sick yeah exactly and I think I think how the teams kind of got split up a little bit you get to play against your friends and then you get to play with the people you used to playing against yeah. and that's always a fun dynamic of like I'm used to like not wanting you to win and now we want to win together. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, along with that, I guess, uh, just announced the World Cup in August. Yeah. So group stage will be in Canada, correct? Thunder Bay? Yeah. 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 So that's August. What? Looking forward to that? What's, what's yeah, the plan there? That'll be pretty sick. Probably just working towards that. Um, yeah. yeah starting to I'm, I'm pretty that. excited. Um, I know USA is in our group, so that's definitely going to be tough. Like qualifying first and second is the goal. Yeah. Or second, sorry. But yeah, that'll be tough. But it'll be fun, I think. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a funky format being the group stage in 2023, and then the final in 2024 at the same yeah. time. Obviously, that's that's kind of exciting because being able to qualify, obviously qualifying is a big thing of getting to the final dance. You need to be there. Yeah. But then it gives you a year to essentially train and like make the team even better to yeah. be able to get into the final and anything can change yeah i think i personally think it's a bit different like having it two different years but almost it might be like a really good chance to bond as a team because i don't know personally a lot of the girls on that team and like within that year i think if we do qualify it might be a really good opportunity for that team to like mesh yeah exactly and i'd imagine qualifying also brings in funding obviously yeah. in australia sports everything's about government funding yeah so if you qualify then we get a lot of funding you can hold training camps you can do so much more stuff within australia to be able to get players better which should be awesome yeah um Talking about that, I guess, segueing right in about training in Australia, it's it's very different. Um, talk to me about kind of, I guess, you've only had the training experience in America. You've played a little bit, but only the training experience. How does training work in Australia, like in terms of club ball? In terms of club ball, we probably train two max three times a week. You, you never really see three times a week though. For me, our club, it's Tuesdays, Thursdays. Half of the time, once you get into the season, the Tuesdays are wiped out for midweek, so you're really only training once and only playing two games. Like The season doesn't go for very long, but I think in Australia, we just have a very different style of training. Um, it's nothing like this, of course. Like We yeah. don't have the kind of equipment or you know depth of knowledge, so I think it comes from almost a very like old mindset, yeah. our training. Like, long conditioning, ma massive amounts of reps, you know, like not not like focused on you, but just like you do a bullpen, you run, that's it. Like, yeah. We don't focus on like cleaning up your arm path during the season. It's just like nothing like that. Yeah, exactly. And I think like that's the way it is all through juniors. Like juniors typically are only training once a week. Yeah. So you can imagine training once a week, playing once a week. We're really only throwing like twice a week, maybe three times. Yeah. So like, I mean, there's a lot of different factors that play into velocity and developing velocity, yeah. but I think that may be a major factor to why like Australians tend to throw a little bit slower than our counterparts around the world. Yeah, definitely. And I think that almost becomes more evident once you, you're only throwing like two, three times a week and then you go to a tournament over here and you're throwing every single day and you see, I can speak from experience, you see kids, their bodies just like break down, yeah. their arms cannot handle the load. Like even my finger just like, 
ripped apart and that that sucked but yeah yeah you just see it happen so easily because we never train that amount until we get over to the tournament everyone's like oh my god like we need to start throwing every day we need to like change it all and it just like doesn't work yeah it just overloads volume and then everybody's done for yeah. um start breaking down everyone just carrying around a little overuse injuries and it's yeah. not fun um no i definitely know when i was working in South Australia and I was like, hey, we're going to throw six days a week. There was kind of like some alarm looks of like, why would we throw that much? Yeah. And once you explain the reasoning, the thought behind it, and it's not, it's not like we're throwing as hard as we can six days a week. You know, we're throwing hard once or twice and then it's just about keeping that volume up. I think there's a lot more buy-in and we've certainly seen some, or they've certainly seen some improvements there. Yeah. Um, so that's been awesome, I think, for those guys. And like, it's definitely getting better. Yeah. Like when, I know when I went back, obviously when I was younger, before I came over to college in 2017, I kind of idolized a the abl but then like division one sabl yeah and i went back to train and i was like this isn't nearly what i thought it was like <laughs> <Yeah>. like <clears throat> there's just like it's very old school mindset there's not really been that trickle down of information yet yeah you know i remember going to practice and the head coach being like right we're hitting like we're hitting backside ground balls like everyone's going to right field like you can't pull the ball yeah and this was like mid i guess renaissance of like pull the ball in the air that's where you get the best results so i'm sitting there like what are we doing? Like, I'm not going to hit. Yeah. Like, I'm not going the other way when I know I can hit the ball way further that way and just get better results. But yeah. I think that's slowly changing, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think so. I think that's changing on the pitching side too. Yeah, I mean, still, like, in club ball, not, like, uh, the development program with, like, Victorian baseball, but you see, like, you don't see any players, like... You will not see a 25-year-old in Australia who's playing yeah. club ball doing pliers or any sort of arm care. It's just like, why would we do that? Yeah. It's just like, there's still a very old mindset, but I think it's changing. I remember just like from 2018 when I first started doing the Excellence Academy with Victoria to like now it's changed so much with like just arm care and pliers, like the drills we're doing and the amount of throwing, like it started off like probably three times a week and then last year we were doing six days of throwing which really it was good like it, yeah. it really helped but yeah it's it's good to see it changing yeah i think that's probably important to talk about like the landscape within australia right now is a we said the club ball three times a week but then when you're growing up obviously you were in high performance programs i wasn't i yeah. wasn't good enough plus i lived in the country but high performance programs typically meet on those non-club ball days so monday wednesday friday Mm -hmm. typically playing on a Saturday and then club ball trains Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah. So the kids that are accelerated end up training that much, but there's still club ball wants you to throw your pens there. Yeah. Meanwhile, you have the best coaches at the high, high performance program. Yeah. So it's like that push and pull of like, I need to be here to do this, but my club ball wants this. And I think there's slowly starting to get this melding there yeah. of like everybody knows which way is forward. Um, so yeah, I think slowly but surely as the younger people get better, and I mean the ABL, everyone's first players. Like, yeah. Those higher level guys that are obviously bringing them back from America, all those guys, it's, it's going to be there. Yeah. But club ball, it's slowly starting to build in. I know I've had some guys back in Australia reach out to me like, hey, how can I get started? What's all this stuff? And I think a lot of that also just comes back to accessibility. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you've looked at it. I looked at it when I was in Australia. Getting a set of pliers, I mean, what do they cost? 60, 65 US? Yeah. The shipping's 80. Yeah. So you're paying more than the product to get it over there. So there's definitely, you know, some problems with how we can introduce this training and how this training can work in Australia. Yeah. But there are weighted balls available. You know, you can you can get around these things. Pliers aren't the be all end all. We can yeah. still train without pliers, but obviously they are an awesome training Definitely. tool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, as well as that, I mean, you've trained in Melbourne, you know what their high performance facility is like. I've trained in Adelaide, I know it's six cages. Um, there's a little bit of a plier wall. We've bent millions of L screens, throwing pliers into L screens. Um, what's it like being in, I guess, being in the facility with, you know, everything that we've got here, all, you know, the special made nets, all the mounds, portable mounds, you know, the lab, the weight room, the massive cage. What's that been like? I mean... I know at Melbourne, our plier wall is a shipping container <laughs> with rubber mats like pinned onto it. So it's a little bit different than here. Um, definitely like just stepping into this place is just like, what? Like, this is real. Yeah. If, if you saw this in Australia, like you'd just be like, oh, like it wouldn't happen in Australia. Yeah, that's like, true. Yeah. If, if that happened in Australia, it would be in the AIS or like where everyone has to go to that one place. Yeah. Like, it's just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just such a surreal place. Yeah. 
I've never seen any. Like, it's, I'm lost for words yeah, in I this think, place. I think the word's unbelievable, to be honest. Yeah. I know that, I mean, obviously, I've been in America for a little bit longer than you. But when I first walked into this place in, you know, December 2020, 2021, when I walked in here, it was like, wow, this yeah. is this is legit. And, like, there's there's no place like this. When I'm growing up, I guess, when South Australia built West Beach up to be what it is, I walked in the indoor there and was like, this is amazing. Yeah. But it's like I still think that's amazing. I'm like, yeah. I walked there and I'm like, damn, I wish we had a closed off cage. Like, that's sick. Yeah. I mean, and meanwhile, it's six cages in a shed. Yeah. Like, it's, it's nothing amazing. It works, sure. But, yeah, I think that's important to touch on is, like, Australia, A, this wouldn't happen, and if it did, that cage is cricket nets. Yeah. Like, there's no doubt about that, and we're not having a specialist mound, uh, yeah. like a specialist mound area, nothing like that. So I think, yeah, it's it's slowly coming in, but yeah. definitely, yeah, this is this is the, uh, the number one place. I mean, like, Melbourne, the whole of Victoria, I think we own one track, man. Like, yeah. this place has more than our, like, entire state. Yeah, like, I mean, it's crazy. Australia in general has three, as far as I know, and they're three stadium units. Like, yeah. Perth has one, Adelaide has one, Melbourne has one. Yeah. Which is awesome, but, like, there's those three, and then there, there might be less than 10 Rapsodos in Australia. Yeah. I know that each of the state programs has one, um, and then there might be a couple of private places with one each, or some of the ABL teams have their own. Yeah. But, yeah, it's like, I mean, we've got, what, three or four trackmen here? Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, there's three in Australia, and I'm pretty sure they don't win them, so. Yeah, definitely coming from, like, Melbourne, we have this little like shed that's a gym. It's got like two squat racks and then like the adjustable like dumbbells that you can like twist yeah. and different weights come up like to walking in the gym here and being like, damn, it's like all personalized. It all says tread. Like it's yep. crazy. It's like the best quality stuff. Yeah. It's just like so different. Yeah. I know the gym at West Beach is probably like about the same size as right here. Yeah. It's like two racks, two benches, and that's about all you're getting. Maybe a pull up bar yeah uh, so no yeah it's definitely we're very lucky but it is an awesome facility and it's definitely been pretty sweet to train in yeah so how's it been training with us i guess because obviously it's it's been very different to what you're used to yeah. um being here how have you how have you found the training i guess being a little bit more intense more more bullpens and a little bit more specialized and to be fair we've we've done some funky stuff trying to clean up the arm action so yeah. how's that been it's been fun like I'm not gonna lie, like, I'm someone, if I have to do the same, like, thing, like, I've been doing the reverse throws, the pivot picks, like, four years now. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't have to do <laughs> any of those over here. I got so bored of them. But, like, it's been so much fun just, like, doing drills I've never seen and, like, yeah. using things I've never seen before. Like, we don't even have, like, the weighted actual baseballs. Like, yeah. Just using those, it's been sick. And just, like, trying different things. Like, even if it doesn't work, it's, like, oh, now I know what that feels like and I know where my body is when I do that. It's just, it's been really fun for the most part. It's been hard, yeah. but fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've certainly run into a few uh, a few stops, but we've we've worked our way around them and started to, started to climb up to 84.5 last week, which has been awesome. Yeah. Um, but no, I think, yeah, that's the that's kind of some of the difference in America. Is Australia, it's very much, we're taking the information from America and doing the best to apply it. Yeah. Whereas it's kind of, you need to understand the information look underneath it to the underlying principles and then do what you need to with it. You need to be able to be creative. Yeah. Coaching, if it was cookie cutter, would be easy. We could just hand out a program to everybody and everyone would get better. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's for you, the cue of, like, using a straight arm doesn't make sense for most people. For, like, for context, Jen was, like, throwing from here. She was yeah. just, like, big elbow throwing there. So I was like, hey, let's throw with a straight arm. Like, try and do this. And then she's perfectly at 90. So, like, it's it's that knowledge of being able to cue things yeah. and it's like okay let's try this let's try that and i think that underlying level of understanding of just hey this is why we're doing this not just like oh this is what you do you know you can't open your hips you do a drop step it's like okay but like why can't you why can't you do a drop step very similar or like why can't you open your hips sorry and like looking at the anatomy side of things too i mean just recently obviously we've had a little bit of a little bit of trouble in layback been a little not so clean and it was, we kind of figured it out eventually. We thought yeah. it was rib cage positioning, but it ended up just being that, you know, we're doing a bunch of pull downs in the gym. Lats have gotten tight, subs caps got tight. You know, we give, give the subs cap a little bit of love yeah. and all of a sudden we're laying back velocities back up. So it's, I think that understanding helps a lot. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure yet. There's, there's certainly that in Australia, but you'd have to go to five different people to find that, you know? Yeah. You have to go to your physio for the subs cap stuff, then a pitching coach, then your other guy for the strength. Whereas, like, having it all here, I think, has probably been helpful for you. Yeah, definitely. It's just not there in Australia. I think also that understanding that, like, 
there is like a million drills that you can do. I think we, we're we very surface level on like we do the standard ones that you like can grab off the driveline website. Or yeah. Like stuff like that. But here it's like you go like three levels deeper and you're actually doing stuff that applies directly to you, which is so great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think obviously, you know, just doing anything is a great start and, you know, anybody just like doing the drills and watching videos, you watch a bunch of different videos, try them out, see what feels good, see what makes the radar gun go up. Yeah. You know, but then it's like, okay, what can I do within that drill to slightly change it that might help me? Um, I mean, I know we haven't really been doing typical step backs anymore. It's kind of a step across and that's helped you tuck your hips. Yeah. So it's, yeah, as you said, kind of taking the drills, modifying them to fit what we need out of them, which has been sweet. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of what training has been like here for you, which has been sweet. Um, you know, 82, 84, touching 85 in the past, hopefully, you know, big pen tomorrow, you're going to see if we can touch a six, maybe a seven, which will be awesome. But after that kind of, I guess you're leaving on Monday back to Australia. I'm leaving on Friday, Friday? but yeah. <laughs> back to Australia on Monday. What's next? Um, probably just getting back home, getting in my own bed, seeing my family, yeah. giving them a big hug. Um, but definitely just out training at Altona again, just yeah. getting back into it. Um, I know you want me deloading for a week and then back into a velo phase and yeah, 100%. try and pop some numbers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think being back home, a bit more of a familiar environment will help a lot. Um, but no, I guess you've got the World Cup in August. So that's our next prep. And then obviously college. College is going to be a big thing for you. Still looking for a school right now, seeing what we can do at the World Cup, what kind of numbers you can put up here tomorrow and kind of looking into that. What, what excites you about going to college? I think just like honestly the team environment like coming back over here to America is like playing baseball over here is sick yeah and just like being in that team with a bunch of Americans yeah just like I guess like I miss playing like baseball like I miss being on the field so much just from these three months but like getting back into like playing on a new team putting on some new threads like, yeah it'll just be sick and then I get to study as well and just like have that college experience I know for me, a lot of it comes from my brother. Like, the only time he'd come back and he'd just like only speak good of college. So I'm like, it must be sick. Like, yeah. if my brother's talking about it, then it must be good. So, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. I remember going home for summers back to Australia, and you get like one month in, and it's like, damn, I wish I was back at school. Like, yeah. I, I want to be training every day. I want to be around my teammates, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So no, that should be, that should be a lot of fun. I think, and obviously, yeah find a place to land and it'll be pretty sweet. Yeah, um, definitely. You can talk about how I started cutting the wall crazy. If you oh know. yeah, I mean, that's true. We can talk about that, yeah. The uh, having, playing catch with every day, obviously we'd play catch, so it's just kind of kept my arm in shape more than anything as well. Yeah. But I mean, starting cutting it, just like throwing sliders at me every yeah. single pitch. Get yeah. on the track, man, and like everything's across the zero line. That one pen where the catcher was just like, it's just, it's like a slider. Yeah. yeah. Like, Damn. <laughs> He's yelling up like, it's like a slider. I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. We're trying to figure that out. Um, I think that came back to honestly the subscat. The yeah. Kind of figuring that out, getting around it, getting behind the ball. Um, yeah. It's really hard to do that if you're kind of stuck here, like your yeah. hand wants to come through like, like that. <laughs> yeah. Yanky. And you're like, you're telling me like, I feel like I'm behind it. And I'm like, well, you're just not. <laughs> like we need to figure out something here. And then, you know, it fixed in basically a day. Yeah, I know. It was like, I stopped trying to fix it and then it just like disappeared. I was like, oh, sick. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the relationship between anatomy and mechanics. It's like, you can try all you want to get in positions, but if your body can't get into those positions, there's no shot you're ever getting there. Yeah, totally. um, so no, it's, it's been sweet having you here. Obviously, you know, coming to the Thank end you. of 12 weeks, it's been a, it's been a fun 12 weeks, but it's, yeah. it's been really short, but then it's also been long sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think getting back to Australia will be really fun for you. Obviously, you know, two, three, four months until the until the World Cup, and then I'd imagine you know the fourth school is going to start up around that time too. So yeah. you probably probably roll into whatever program you end up at at a a little bit late because of the World Cup. But that'll yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah, it'll be sick. Yeah. Sweet, perfect. Thank you for having me. No problem. Appreciate it.